I got here in 1960 with my mother and sister. My father had to stay behind uh, because, as you can well imagine, a year after the revolution, there was a great deal of uh, activity at the consulate with Lebanese uh, immigrants wanting to leave the country. So my father had to stay behind uh, tending to, to visas and, and what have you. So I got here uh, on the verge of being 10 years old. I remember uh, going into sixth grade, uh, hardly knowing uh, the language and what I was reading. I never, I don't have a recollection of ever being able to speak English, but to gradually pick it up as I went along, you know. We didn't have private tutors or anything like that. We couldn't afford them. But film and music have always been parallel uh, avocations for me. I mean, I remember you know, instances in my, in my childhood in Havana where I, was, uh, where I was marked by either one, but not to the, signific to the degree and significance that they took on after I left the country. I think as an adult I come to understand why, but the early memories that I have as a child, you know, is for example, uh, getting a nice 78 RPM of um, uh, an, Elvis, uh, an Elvis Presley album or an Elvis Presley single, you know, under the Christmas tree. You know, what a neat surprise. You know, I love those colorful uh, covers, you know, with, with um, Elvis and his pompadour in different, you know, sometimes he, 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 he had black hair as in loving you and in other times he had brown hair, you know, I could never tell well, what was the real color of his hair or they kept dyeing it, but, you know, I was a big Elvis fan as a seven, eight years old, you know, and I remember seeing uh, Jailhouse Rock as a kid in Havana. Then I remember seeing when I came to to South Florida, I remember seeing um, Loving You uh, on Miami Beach in one of the theaters, you know, near or on Lincoln Road. I can remember precisely. Um, and then a few years later, uh, I remember I remember in Mexico City, um, because I, I lived my, my early teenage years in Mexico City. When my father finally left uh, Cuba in 1961, he became a, uh, a diplomat for the Lebanese uh, government. And he was first stationed in, in Mexico City and then in Beirut where I graduated from high school at the American Community School in the middle of the Six Day War. Okay. Um, what happens is the worst, the worst thing that can happen to a kid is to have to pack up and go every few years. You know, it happened to me when I was nine and I had to leave uh, Cuba. Nobody who left around those years thought that they were leaving for, for keeps. They thought we'd be going for a few months, a couple of years at most, but nobody really thought that they were not coming back. You know, um, and it's sad that my, fa my, my, my parents never did, you know. I haven't gone back, but that's another drink of water altogether. The point I was making is kids don't like to have their lives uh, interrupted. It's not fair because at that time you're making friends, you know, you're, you're um, getting used to, to a place and, and, and a time and an environment. And whereas it's good to acquire a cosmopolitan view of the world, you make friends and you lose friends and you're left in the lurch uh, every so often. So my friends became the two constants that I had wherever I went, which was film and music. In Mexico City, I found out right away where you could buy the top 40 singles, and I'd go there with the money I had saved during the week, 